Okay, Thursday morning in the kingdom, and I start my morning off with Dick flying right over my bedroom. I was changing out my bed sheets for the dog blankets so they can sit on my bed and enjoy the good life. And then I look out the window and Dick flew right over, but I didn't have the camera to record the great event. But oh well, four years of him harassing me, and I just shake my head. Yes, phone the authorities, phone everybody, nobody cares. But the day he crashes, oh, they're going to be all... A of my new best friends, he'd say. Like I say, if Dick's flying here, he couldn't get a job anywhere else. All right, this morning we woke up to plus 11, but feels like plus 11. Yeah, right, it's chilly out here. And there's a slight breeze. Yes, we're used to it now. All right, on the yo-yo scale, plus 52 Fahrenheit, but feels like plus 52. Yes, yesterday was a busy day and Johnny G arriving early by 45 minutes. That screwed everything up because I was so focused on getting the door hinge done on the 39 Chevy snow truck. Yes, and then we had to drop everything and unload him quickly. So I wasn't really prepared. I was to have all the pallets ready for him to back up and to switch them quickly. But oh well. He got to enjoy watching me go back and forth in the loader. Yes. All right, let's check to see if there's any sun. They're saying there's air quality problems today. No shit. Yes. It's called fire force fire smoke. I don't remember this much smoke growing up. Oh, I got the burps. I smeared my toast with peanut butter today. Yes. I don't remember this much smoke growing up and everything like that. But I don't think we had the fires back then. Not like today's world where they start the fires and say it's climate change. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I'll be censored. Oh, well. All right. So today we're going to work on. Well, first we got to empty the loader shed in there. Get everything put away. All those gifted items from people around around the world sending us stuff to get these projects finished so there should be enough parts in the box to put gomez the greater back together yes and we're gonna work on the snow truck today hopefully we'll get some steering yes so we can drive around with plywood on the windows so we can steer it yes that's just a minor detail all right just a little bit more here oh there we go i untangled the flags this morning in hopes there's no great wind to destroy them. Yes, on freaking real. The wind we're getting, I don't remember that wind being that windy either up here. That's why I left the south after the great divorce. Yes, divorce, I died. Came up here and I enjoyed the windless days. You know, you'd only get a couple of windy days a year, I think I remember correctly. Now it's just on real, the wind we're getting. Oh, well, it's those wind generators speeding up the wind. Yes. Oh, I better stop this little rat. Oh, I better go. Here comes the boss. Dick's probably on his way back to buzz me again. Okay, let's do a quick recap on Dick. All right, Dick's been flying over the house in the yard for four years. Okay, the first three years, we spent a lot of time phoning and complaining. I think there's over 300 calls to Transport Canada to their automated voice box. And we got one response out of the three years. So phoning the cops and phoning the mining company is pointless. The mining company in Toronto returned my call and we chatted for about 33 minutes. And then the next day, Dick's flying sideways through my yard and you can see their smiley faces. So I phoned the mining company back and they won't return my call. So it's pointless. So let's recap. That caboose is converted to a, it cost me $10,000 to convert it to a sound studio, a recording studio, so people, authors can change their books from uh, books to audio books, and then it can go on the Amazon site, which is ACX. All right, I can't record in that studio because of Dick and his helicopter. You use two, you lose two to three minutes of recording as he flies over low to, to you. So the idea was to build the recording studio and then rent it out to other authors. Other authors travel the world to record their books, right? So why not come to Whoville and be in a remote location like in the caboose? And then uh, I think it was 2022, we had a film drone shipped up from Winnipeg. Yes, a film drone because they wanted to record us. So they wanted to see some action. So they sent us a drone. This is uh, the drone from the bedroom for, for uh, filming purposes. The film drone could not fly. It would only go three feet off the ground because of the codes of the airport. So the filming company went to the airport in Winnipeg, had a drone fly within 1.2 kilometers of the airport in Winnipeg, and had the codes in encrypted into the film drone. They shipped it up to us, and we couldn't get it to fly because we're too close to the airport, as they say, so it's restricted airspace. We even, uh, the film company had uh, codes entered into the drone for 30 minutes of fly time. This would not fly. 
So I sit here every day. I can't fly drones or anything like that to record my life or to market my life. But every day, up to 20 times a day, Dick can fly over here, fly over my house and endanger my life. So I went and got some fireworks to have a gender revealing party for my goldfish. I released the fireworks to see how high it would go. And I did a video and had it on TikTok and everything like that. And then I got some emails and comments saying I can't do that because the fireworks tip out at 200 feet and I can take Dick out. So they say that's bad. I'll be the one charged. So Dick can endanger my life knowing that that helicopter will crash at any given time. It'll lose rotation and crash into my house, but that's okay. So that tells you why I do not like them. And the fact that I've seen, uh, how would you say, two of my friends die in a helicopter. Plus uh, the anniversary of that one that I welded on and that crashed just outside of Hoover, I mean, Leaf Rapids, Grief Rapids. So it is instilled in my memory. So every day we live in fear of Dick and everybody seems to think it's a freaking joke. But when the day he crashes, we have enough film footage and the fact that we tried to contact people to have them fly within the safety regulations and rules of aviation, but that failed miserably. All right, let's get back to regular scheduled programming because this little part of the video can be used when Dick crashes into the yard and kills me. Okay, you know you're gonna have a bad day when you wake up with Dick and his helicopter. And then I'm in the house there. How would you say doing emails, comments, replying and plugging away, getting everything done. And I had a two paragraph email that I was about ready to send and then the power goes out. Look, there's no power in here, Les Nessman. on frickin' real. So the town of Whoville is supposed to shut the water off on the north end of town today. But I think they screwed up and shut the power off. But then again, Welcome to the world we live in. There's not a breeze. There's not a cloud, not a breeze or anything like that. There's no thunderstorms and the power goes out. Just like uh, July of last year when the power went out for three days because a tree fell over on the main line. Oh, that sounds a lot or whatever. The tower fell over. Unreal. So there's going to be a shitty day today. My hemorrhoids will probably flare up too. Okay, it's getting smoky out here. Maybe that's why the hydro, we have no hydro because it's too smoky and current can't travel through the wires or whatever. Okay, so we're doing things differently. I didn't want to film it this way, but this is the way it's going to have to work out because we have no power. All right, this is the 41 Chevy. We built it back in 1999. Oh, <coughs> playing Junkyard Wars with my dad. We had fun. So it's a 74 International Harvester, three quarter ton frame. The transfer case goes up, okay? See, it's up there. All right, that's why the body's raised up. A Chevy, the transfer case hangs down. We have a rebuilt automatic transmission in here with the clutch kits and the high stall, everything like that. It doesn't work. You can spin the tires when the small tires are on, but you put these big ones on, it doesn't spin the tires for some reason. Gear ratio, maybe? Okay. But we also changed out the rear ends to that 86 Chevy Suburban that came from Wisconsin, which the motor is in the 38 Maple Leaf. All right, so on Marketplace, Facebook, I uh, kind of cruising along there, and a fellow had the transmission for sale. All right, so here's a transmission, transfer case, everything like that. So I asked Sir Rodney to pick it up. This is back in May. So Sir Rodney actually knows the guy because the he deals with Sir Rodney through Westran. So it worked out pretty good. The guy gave us a discount on it. Plus he threw in a bunch of stuff from under the workbench, okay, except for that reducer. That was back ordered for when we did the dual exhaust on the TD-18. So that came, so Rodney's held it, or Sir Rodney's held it till now when we had shipping. So this stuff's been sitting at West Trans since May. I forget why it was delayed. I think the staff went through and checked over this transmission, okay? We took a chance with the transfer case, okay? Trying to upgrade to a Chevy versus International. But as you can see, the front drive shaft's on that side, so that's the earlier ones in 1990s and up or something i'm not familiar but i wanted the transmission so that's no big wow we can change out this tail shaft here to the dry shaft and then we have the little dry shaft to go to the ih transfer case but the main thing is we look at the parts this fellow included like even if we don't use this the bell housing okay because we're buying these bell housings on ebay for the trucks and stuff so having an extra bell housing with the five inch hole yes the five inch hole that makes a big difference so now we're happy that this transmission can now go into the 41 and then we can have zoom zoom and spin the tires and we'll just have to get a little dry shaft made up under here because the transfer case doesn't work so there's a the little dry shaft back in there 
and you can see the drive shafts on this side because that's a older 80 Chevys I guess you call it okay in my previous videos I've always stated that Alan Musk should call in to Sir Rodney with his credit card okay so we're making jokes about that saying you know support the projects and get these projects done because the money tree died now that I'm retired plus well, even when I was working as a business nobody was paying their bills so a fellow uh, we can't say his real name on uh, on the t channel here or, or the name he chose or asked us to use because uh, that's copyright through the Austin Powers films or whatever. So we'd like to thank the fellow. We'll call him Dave. Yes, Dave. Dave is the one that phoned in his credit card to Sir Rodney. So there's the oil we need for the final drives or the chain drives here. I think it's two pails per case here. And then the oil has to go into the trans or the differential here. So basically these pails here, half of them will go into the grader and then half will go into the um, D7 known as Jack. All right, so Sir Rodney and Paul packed this pretty good. The fellow also gifted us a whole bunch of welding rods. Yes, the Hobart handler, one, no, the Hobart 7018 for welding on the grader because it's going to need lots of love on the mole board over there. The circle thing, it spins around. So that's what I say. People around the world wants these projects to be completed. Yes. And I'm very thankful that people are helping us out with the projects. Anything from gifting flags to Kool-Aid, it all helps up, out because we live at the end of the world. Also too, this is the paper towel for the house. Yes, paper towel so expensive up here, we can't afford to buy it at the store. So we get it through Sir Rodney. Yes, we have a big uh, paper towel dispenser. I'm not sure what's in these little boxes okay but i'll open them up because we have other boxes in the hose shack when the power comes back on we'll have lights in there and then we can record there but we once again we have to thank the fellow who we're calling dave <laughs> for uh how is he supporting us and getting these projects completed because i would have had to wait for the money tree to blossom or or uh some uh how would you say inheritance money to arrive yes wait oh mother died four years ago and the lawyers are still holding off on the money Oh well, let's get this put away. The sand flies are getting bad, so that means it's gonna rain, so let's get these items put away. Okay, lunchtime in the kingdom, and I ran around with the loader and got everything done. Still no power, but that's okay, because we have the welding sleigh up and running. Can you hear that, Les Nesman? Yes. Oh, that Ohio flag looks so good. It's got the right colors and everything, and stars, yeah. All right, let's go have some lunch and then see what's going on. Okay, the power came back on because when I had the generator running, I checked uh, Manitoba Hydro online. They said the power would be out till 6 p.m. So all oh, lies, lies. Yes, yeah, so the power came back on. So we are just getting stuff quickly organized because it's going to start raining here more. So we brought on everything for the 41 Chevy into the hose shack. The guy included the cross shaft for the clutch and everything like that. And look at the chrome gear shift lever. We can't have that. We're going to have to paint it. And we were gifted some paint. Yes, trem clad black, which is the color of the kingdom. Oh, that's in French. Nor le stour, something. All right, there's gloss black, okay? So Rodney can get that through West Trans. These are our shop supplies here, because we go through lots of that gasket goo. And the square batteries. Yes, the temperature gun uses a square battery. Plus the alarm clock in my bedroom uses a square battery. So we got some lube for the carburetors. We have some glass cleaner and then this maximum defense. The bugs are bad today, so we're going to probably try it out. All right. So on this side of the table is for the 37 Dodge hot rod or whatever the tribute truck. So there's a the new Camaro coil springs. We have the parts for the bushings here to for the upper and lower control arms. We only ordered the one top one because we're just watching the money. And then this is for the transmission. So Rodney had to import it from the Far East, I think it is. But that's that funny coarse splines. Everyone else is split fine. And then over here, we have the greater parts. All right. We have to sit down and figure out the seals and what we ordered them for. Because some of this stuff is back in July. Yes, July. So everything's right here. We sent this down on June 24th. So Rodney had it relined at West Trans and they painted up. So it's a lot better than that greasy one I sent. There's the pilot bearing for the grader and these seals here being so large I know they're for the grader okay and there's the new thermostats for the grader and then there's the coupler for the power of tower the tower of power and the PTO shaft for live hydraulics out the back the fuel filters and the chain links so we can put the chains onto the wheels and we can actually drive it all right so I do everything in the national seal numbers because that's the best catalog online. So Sir Rodney was writing the 
seal national seal number on the CR seal number because that's the line of seals that they deal with at Westron. So that's pretty easy to figure out. But I have all my sheets in the house because I have to write everything down. So one of these seals in here should be the input shaft seal on the Lynn tractor transmission. Yes, and then that can go in and that cleans up a lot of these parts. So this uh, oh, we got a busy month ahead of us because everything's come in now with the supplies. Now we can get this stuff organized and figure things out. And this is sure is a nice transmission that Sir Rodney got. Uh, he knew the fellow, so he knew that it was going to be a good deal. So we're very pleased with it. All right, let's get to work and enjoy some smoke outside before the rains really come. Okay, these are the carburetor parts the fellow sent us up from. He's in Minnesota. So he would include the points and everything he had on his uh, parts shelf. So basically, he just grabbed everything, tossed it in a box, and it works out good. So now I have to sit down, and each one of these uh, jets, as they're called, is numbered okay so i have to learn so there's your numbering and everything like that so i'm gonna have to sit here and sort this out and then sit and figure out these points because he says they should fit some of the magnetos and stuff like that in the kingdom yes yeah, so he knows more than i do because i'm learning i never really got involved in this stuff because my dad handled it it was all in his memory he did it for all his life so now i'm having to learn so that's okay because we got rain days, snow days. We can sit here and sort all this out. Then when I need an injector or a jet for the carburetor, okay? Because you got to remember these are these little jets right here. And then these little needles go in and up. Oh, this is upside down. Did it right, Les Nessman. So this goes up and down like that to regulate the fuel. Oh, I can't do it. No hand and eye coordination. It's a good thing I'm not in the bedroom. There. There we go there i can't even work the camera there so that's how it works so bigger jet more fuel more boom boom smaller jet fuel economy no boom boom all right let's go clean up some mess outside finish getting organized because we knew it was a busy day today but this smoke and no power screwed up our life big time okay back in last april we grabbed all the parts and pieces because this truck had no front end under it because we used it all on all the other trucks yes it was the parts truck now we're putting it back together with the how would you say not so good parts from the other trucks but the main thing is the other trucks are almost roadworthy and will pass a commercial safety so we got the green toy out we had to use the long long chain to clear the hood see that first time ever the green toy had enough reach not like my honeymoon all right so we got it hanging in the air we're going to pop the front end all out to drag it into the shop because if the rain starts we can start piecing stuff together yes because we kind of put it together with bolts i don't know if you can see that right here we just trying to shove bolts and everything in so we can how would you say have an idea so i think we can have it up on wheels because you know it is september long weekend the labor day weekend so we can celebrate with a, maybe a victory drive drive around the yard till the chains fall off yes the tire chains fall off so we got some tires for the front we put them on the 39s or whatever the 10 bolt pattern these are 53 chevy eight bolt patterns okay can you see that eight bolt pattern so everything in the 30 um 38 gmc and the 39s are a 10 bolt pattern so what we did in the past to get uh, how would you say the only reason we use these is because we have to use the big wheels to clear the brake drums on the front here okay so that's why we were using it and then we were able to source a supply to get the original 720 tires for the for the 38 gmc and the 39 chevy so we got this one drilled out back in the day using the torch and die grinder it's a mess and we just have to put five holes in this one to make it line up but that's the joys we've bettered ourselves over the years because this gmc has the we only use the five on the front and we bought some nice decent tires they take about six months to get through the tire store in thompson so that's 720s and it gives it a nice profile in the fender plus we had the springs redone and arced that whole front end's been rebuilt from kingpins to tie rods to drag links and this truck is close to passing a commercial safety you know because it's complete it's all done and done right so we invested the money over the years so now let's go have some fun oh the bugs are bad it's gonna rain okay coffee time in the kingdom and i think we're gonna hide in the shop out of that smoke i got a headache already from that smoke so hopefully maybe when i stop for a beverage here at coffee time i'll have some titty vodka to try and get rid of the headache all right so we're laying everything out we found some tie rod and 
from the 46 Chevy. Yes. And we're going to make them fit in here. We don't have the original ones because they were worn out junk. And I think we tossed them. And we have the drag link that we're going to make. I don't know if you can see this last Nessman. One points down, one points up. It's backwards. So we just have to cut it and make it the right length. Because I don't think that's the right length. All right. So we have this already here. We have marked. And we got the brake drums off. So now we can uh, make sure the bolt pattern on those uh, 53 Chevy wheels fit. And then over here, everything is well marked to go to the storage trader. That way I have spare front drums for the 38 and the 39. That way in case I have a, a brake drum crack on me, yeah, overheat and crack, then we have spares. Yes, all right, let's go have a quick beverage and get back out here. This smoke is unreal. Okay, the first thing I did after beverage was come out there and cut out the new holes. Yes, I used the plasma cutter instead of the torch and everything we did in the past. All right, so that kind of lines up kind of good. That's close enough for the ladies I go with. Now I'll get, to get a kick out of this. All right, I'm Hercules. All right, so there's the eight bolts or whatever, okay? This rim got loose, so they welded the oval holes out and welded them closed. So that's pretty neat what the old timers bid, did back then. When you flip the rim over, you can't even see these welds. It's just smooth. Like the guy did a nice job grinding, but he didn't kind of have a good luck here at this side. All right, let's continue on with this quest. We got lots to do. It should start raining right away. Okay, six o'clock in the kingdom, and I played around with the front axle here and the kingpins. Yes, the kingpins. Yes, we didn't film this because, how would you say... We didn't do it properly. We did it our way to get it done. And we don't want somebody to not watch the whole video to understand we live remote. And how would you say we have to improvise, adapt, and overcome? Also, too, we needed a spindle nut here. Okay. So we found out that the bread truck axle wheel nuts are metric. Well, they kind of fit on here, eh? It works out pretty good. Because that's the only thing we could find here for threads. We needed a fine thread. I don't know if we can see that, Les Nessman. That is a really, really fine thread. And we weren't wasting time. We want to go for a test drive this weekend and cruise Dairy Queen. Oh, speaking of Dairy Queen, look at the curly cues on top. All right. So we get the kingpin in there. And then we weld the little button thing on top. Because they're like tapping it into place while we were living the cold. So when you grease it, the top pops out. So we always do a continuous weld around. But also the fact is there's grease in here so that it gives you pinholes. So we put the topper or the gasket goo topping on it and you smooth it in with your finger and give it the little Dairy Queen ice cream, to ice cream cone top. All right, so this side's done and this side's done too. All these wedgy things were busted up, broken because this is the last of the good, this is the good stuff. This is the stuff we thought was good enough to save on all the kingpins we changed out so we made it work yes made it work so as you can see the wedgies there aren't in good shape thread wise but we made it work and that's the main thing so if we're driving through the wilderness yes wilderness alaska in northern manitoba and this kingpin falls out and the wheel falls off or the ski falls off and we hit a tree that's okay so if somebody watched the video and did it this way and drove down the highway and the kingpin fell out and then they smashed their car up uh, that wouldn't be good so we have to watch what we post on the internet because people don't read or follow along they just assume and it makes an ass of you and me oh yes the bad news bears all right let's go check on the flags because the rains have stopped thursday morning in whoville it's almost 9 a.m and i just got up to let the dogs out and to see if there was still water this side of whoville is supposed to have the water shut off most of the day because there's a water break just up the street from me i'm not sure if you can hear the machines in the background this is the temperature we're sitting at right now it's 15 degrees celsius which is 59 degrees fahrenheit we even had the feels like on the bottom now it's time to head inside let the dogs out make some toast and i'm still not feeling the greatest 10 a.m. and I was just getting ready to lay down and I noticed that the power went out. It's been out for about five minutes or so. I'm not sure how long it'll last. It's not storming or anything here, but there could be a storm south of town. It's actually supposed to rain today, so this isn't surprising. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out, and wait. Almost 10.30 a.m. and the power just came back on. It was out for about 15-20 minutes. That is pretty short compared to the last time it was out for about three hours or so. Now let's head inside and lay back down for a bit. 
1 p.m. and the power just came back on after my last video at 10 30 a.m. the power's been off since this is the temperature we're sitting at right now it's 20 degrees celsius which is 68 degrees fahrenheit we even had the feels like on the bottom as you can see it is pretty smoky here right now now it's time to head inside let the dogs out make a quick lunch and wait for four so i can go to the kingdom 4 p.m. and i just got the quad out the water is still off in whoville now i'll head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to and as you can see it is starting to get nasty out here and i can actually feel it raining just after 4 p.m. and i made it to the kingdom and as you can see it has started raining i even made sure to open up my dad's rain catcher there that way he can collect all this rain water now i'll head down to the shop and see what he's up to Almost 4.30 and I'm done in the kingdom. I just came to drop off my dad's supper and his bread. He is working on the front end of the snow truck here, but as you can see, it is raining, so he's hiding away in the shop. Now I'll grab my dog treats and head on back into Whoville and do the weather around 5 or so. 5 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We even had the feels like on the bottom. As you can see, the rain has let up a bit, but it was pouring earlier when I got home from the kingdom. Now it's time to head inside, let the dogs out before it starts raining again, and end my day. Okay, that's lame-ass rain we had. Yeah, just like my honeymoon. It was lame-ass. All right, so we got things done in the shop, but we're geared up and going. And the smoke has kind of lifted. You could actually breathe. I got a headache from that. And then I went and sniffed that uh, gasket goo and the fumes from welding. I'm okay now. No headache. Maybe it was the beverage. All right, let's go walk the dogs, drink some beer, make a video, and we'll talk to you later.